Hi, this is Melanie with Red Clover Reader. And at Red Clover Reader, we're on a mission to give families affordable access to fun online content that they feel good about and give independent authors a chance to share their stories with a wider audience. Today, we're talking with Pam Rice about her children's book, The Painting Speak. Hi, Pam. Hi, Melanie. How are you? Great. Good. Great. So I really love The Painting Speaks. So it's, it's really a beautiful book. Well, thank you. It, uh, it's one of my, my fa one of my favorites for sure. What, what was your inspiration for writing it? Well, you know, I've always been an artist and um, I've had quite a few shows and, and you know, people have bought stuff on and offline and, and uh, you know, the common thread has been people wondering, you know, how do people make certain selections or how do I put forth paintings that, that uh, I think people may like and my, my my question has always been, my answer has always been, um, well, the painting has to speak to you. You know, you 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 know, people. You just never know what turns people on, and uh, so that's where it. The title pretty much came from, and and from that, I just kind of turned it into a story. You know, making it making it very literal. You know, and and and. and by using children as an example, that was pretty easy to do because uh, uh, most children will, will ask, you know, well, does a painting really speak? You know, if yeah. they're really young, they'll ask that question. You know, does that painting, what is the painting saying to you? Uh -huh. So I, I, I just kind of spend it into a story and um, uh, the painting speaks, starts out in a, in a, in a classroom uh with the teacher telling the students that they're going to a gallery to you know look at various paintings and you know to go through and find out which ones they really really like and a few students would ask well how how do you know you know uh how will i know if i like a certain painting and and that's how the story evolves it evolves uh uh with children going through and finding out which paintings they really like, and one little girl takes it very literal. Yeah, yeah. I well, I, I love the illustrations too; they're really beautiful. Thank you. So, you feature a couple of artists in the book. Were those paintings that spoke to you? Yes. Um, the Cynthia St. James has done a lot of of a lot of she's very graphic in her paintings i mean her paintings are very uh bold very colorful and um and i thought it would be an, an easy uh picture to use this particular one would be a very easy one to use in this particular story um you know she she was is one of the first black artists who um was accepted by the U.S. Postal Service uh, her uh, to use on a Kwanzaa stamp, and um, so I, I, you know, I really, really wanted to use that. I knew it would be identifiable. Mm -hmm. um, then there's a couple other artists that I use. One who, uh, one young lady um, from Texas, who I used her in a. Uh, a Mazda commercial, uh, one of her paintings. Um, and then a gentleman from Texas as well, who he does some very beautiful pencil renderings, very large too. Most people don't do very large pencil renderings, but he does. And so, um, you know, and I like to involve people that I know um, and, you know, they were very glad to, 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 to be in the book and so, that was a big plus. Yeah, I think I think that's a really unique uh, a really unique style to include those paintings, and uh, I'm, I really like it. Well, you know, one of the things I one of the yeah one of the things I like to do is I like to um, I like the stories to have some serious meaning, you know, and 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 they have to be um, uh, 
relatable. I mean, you have to have some purpose for it and just not just, you know, frivolous stories, but stories that really have meaning, that there's uh, some significance behind it. And all of this, all of my books are like that. And, and generally in the back of the book, um, I may have a paragraph or two that explains why that particular uh, story was written and and focus on the character and and how that character relates to the 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 story itself. Yeah, I think that's cool. That's I think that's really relatable for kids. Yes. So you mentioned that you have written close to sixteen books. Mm hmm. Are those okay. all all children's books? All children's books. Um, wow. I've I've published other stuff. Uh, um, I just recently published one on a Tuskegee Airman, but um, children's books is something I got into in 2015. Um, I was always doing books for other people, other writers, and uh, and I think I maybe did maybe a total of ten for other writers, and I got to the point where. <laughs> where I said, you know, I really could, I've got a lot of stories to tell and maybe I should start doing my own thing. And um, once I got started, I mean, you know, it's just everything just kind of fell into play because my resources has always been um, experiences as mm -hmm. a child or listening to other people's experiences. And so it really makes it, um, you know, I really had a wealth of information. I never had any um, problems coming up with content because there's always something to, you know, I've always got something to write about. And currently I've got maybe two books in the, in the wings waiting to be published. I mean, they're already written and illustrated. They're just uh -huh. not out yet. Cool. Oh, that's great. I can't, I can't wait to hear about those. Yeah. So how did you develop your your illustration style? You know, that's that's an interesting question because when I started out doing stuff for other people, you know, I I was really inspired by Zyra Keats, and I'm sure you're familiar with him in uh -huh. a snowy day. Yeah. And, you know, I think I bought everything that he had. And uh, I like the simplicity and the fact that he used a lot of textures and uh -huh. his colors were real nice. And um, so, you know, by the time I started doing my own books, I had the, the foundation, the style pretty much down. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, I'm always fine tuning it. Um, sometimes I have to remind myself to hold back and not be so detailed and to stay simple and using the nice contrast between positive and negative shapes um, because I have a tendency sometimes to just get carried away. And, you know, a lot of times I'll put stuff down and come back. And once I do that, I can usually, you know, get to where I want to be with the, with the style. So that's, that's one of the things I've really worked on is trying to um trying to keep true to the reason why I why I chose that particular style. Yeah. I I think it's really cool. I love the contrast between kind of like the dreamy dreamy aspects of it and then you know having something kind of more concrete and real and textured I think is really it's, it's really cool. Yeah, it's a, it has a, it has a lot of interest in it. You know, you 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 know, I pick out shapes and textures and 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 uh, that just adds more interest to it rather than just doing using flat colors and shapes. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, that's the challenge, too. You know, that makes it exciting. That keeps it keeps it, you know, because I'm always collecting and researching and looking for different things to use uh, and trying to create a library of things that I could use in upcoming publications as well. Cool. Cool. Can you tell us a little bit about um, your choice to self-publish? 
Ah. Uh, well. Self-published authors are really, you know, they are, they're definitely in our heart. That's a big part of our mission is helping self-published authors reach a, a wider audience. So yeah, we're and really I, excited. And I, and, and I can really appreciate that because um, uh, one of the main reasons is for cost. And the other reason is, you know, I like to have control over what what I do and what goes out because I've been in the design field all my life. That's what I've always done. And so, you know, mm -hmm. I think self-publishing is good for um, people who are, are organized and can manage well because mm -hmm. it, there's a lot of aspects to self-publishing. Um, not only from you know, being writing from writing to illustrating and to uh, uh, layout and design, and then going to printing and marketing and packaging. So there's a whole there's a there's a big you know area when you talk about self publishing. Some people do only part of it and turn over the balance to the, to someone else, but having that total control is. You're not, you're not dealing with anyone else's schedule. Yeah. Um, so yeah. that, to me, that is why I enjoy doing it so much because if I feel real creative and I feel creative enough to do five books in, you know, in a, in a, in a week, then I can do that. You know, yeah. if I don't want to do, if I don't want to publish or produce anything for a month or two, then then I can do that. But it's a lot of mm -hmm. freedom when you self-publish. It really is. Yeah, we've, we've heard that from authors, mm -hmm. especially authors who have had um, publishers make, suggest changes to their stories that they just weren't, you know, they just couldn't support. Yeah. And, you know, I like to, I like to, I work with my goddaughter, Jolie, uh, because she's, she does a lot of the editing now. Um, and she's given me a wealth of information as far as um, maybe some of the content or the color or how it might appeal to someone more youthful. And I need that other set of eyes and that input. Mm -hmm. And it really makes a big difference to have someone else step in because you can be too close to it as a writer and an, an illustrator. You know, I can get too close to it to the point where I don't really see um, see my mistakes or see see things that might need to be changed. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, having that um, having that view really really helps. Everyone should have it. I mean, I don't care who you know steps in and and, and gives the critiques it, but everybody needs to be critiqued. I think, and certainly. Um, at the point of um, when you when you think when you think you're almost there and you got everything down and uh -huh. everything's all aligned, you know someone else really needs to eyeball it because um, I've gone through and done some some massive overhauls uh, uh, because someone else has has looked at it and said you know this is not this is this doesn't work too well. Yeah. That, so I have to put it down and I will go back because, you know, the last thing I want to do is have something out there that's just not going to not going to work. You yeah. Know? Yeah. It has to be it has to be right on. And especially when the, the input is is um, um, the input means so much uh, and, it's, and it really makes a big difference. Yeah, and I think that's another thing that self-published authors really have to take on, you know, take initiative with because ordinarily publishing kind of provides that, mm -hmm. that critical eye and, mm -hmm. and it's kind of like a gatekeeper. Yeah. That's great. That's great to hear your your perspective on that. Yeah. So besides um, being a prolific author and painter, do you have any free time that you do anything else in? <laughs> Yeah, it's funny you should ask that because uh, uh, I had someone ask me last uh, summer. Um, <laughs> I had someone ask me last summer, uh, and I'm trying to figure out what I. I think I was I was doing a show, a, an art show, and she was watching me 
put this show together, you know, the, the paintings and positioning and stuff like that. And she looked at me and she says, well, when do you have time to do this? Or when do you have time to do that? You know, and, and it's, it's all about time management. Yeah. And I think if you know what you're doing and you can do it well, you can manage well. Um, and that's a big, you know, I think time management is, is big in anything that anybody does because if you can manage your time to, to handle all the interests you have, then that's a good thing. But yeah. uh, a lot of times people will focus on one thing and something else slides to the way side. Mm -hmm. And um, if you enjoy doing various things and you find the time to um, do what you love to do. Yeah. 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 Because yeah, life just marches on. It, it does. Marches. And it won't wait on you either. No, it certainly doesn't. It certainly doesn't. <laughs> So <clears throat> do you have any tips for young readers that you can leave us with before we conclude? Any or for parents? Yeah, parents. Well, one of the things that, you know, um, I've kind of adopted one of the slogans is that, you know, um, I have this branding with this gold seal uh, with kids, kids book shelves, mm -hmm. um, is that, they're more like a, I could say, read to me book. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. um, parents can read these books to their children, but at the same time, uh, once the kids get older and they start reading themselves, then they can still go back and read these books themselves and still enjoy it. It's like, it's not going to get old. Yeah. You know, I made the point at one time. Uh, that these books are good for adults too, because I'm I'm taking I'm 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 writing so that every book has a message, mm -hmm. and uh, so there's always something to be derived from from each book, no matter how simplistic it may appear from the outside. Yeah. <clears throat> well, thank you, Pam. Thanks a lot for sharing that. Of course. We definitely appreciate that. So, yeah, we would love to stay in touch. I think your your work is just absolutely beautiful, and we're excited to chat with you. So oh, thanks definitely. for joining us. This has been a Red Clover Reader Hangout with author and artist Pam Rice. Have a great rest of your afternoon, Pam. And you too. Thanks very much. Sure. Okay, bye for now.